Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation uh, and for having me here today for uh, my presentation. So my name is Matias. I am the CD of Syracuse Chief Innovation and Data Officer. So today I wanted to offer the perspective of how do you think about this sort of stuff by like bringing an analytical mindset into an organization such as a uh, city government. So I am the Office of Analytics, Performance, and Innovation at the city. Uh, that's uh, a department with uh, around 20, 20 folks or so with multiple uh, portfolios, multiple divisions, one of which is our uh, data division, which includes uh, data engineers, data analysts, uh, data project managers, shout out to our team uh, member, Arnima. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, we work with departments throughout the city and I'm trying to think about um, how we bring that, that data approach. So here's where, here's the journey that I wanted to take you on today. Um, because I'm going to be talking about the foundations for a data driven First of all, like understanding like what the challenge is that my department is trying to solve for and that the city is trying to solve for. Uh, what it means to build a foundation for data, and I think it, it, it dovetails very nicely into the previous conversation, as well as uh, the role that open data plays throughout um, for city government. And then I'm going to deep dive into some real life, like analytical use cases, like right? what are we doing in the city government to do data. So, uh, to start off with, uh, I actually wanted to talk about something completely out of left field, which is the NHS. Does anyone know what the NHS is or what that stands for? It's a national health care system for healthcare. Right. Anybody can get a free health care checkup. That's right. It's a, it's a national health service of the United Kingdom. Um, now, uh, what, what sort of data do we imagine that an organization like the NHS would, would have, would work with? Sensitive. Sensitive data. Sensitive data, yes, like, like what? Like what would be sensitive? Patient, patient health record. Patient health record, yeah. That's a, that's a big one. These the data, like the pharmaceutical forms, like what, what kind of entities do they have and what they specialize in? Mm -hmm. Pharmaceutical data, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What else I would throw in there? Administrative data, like how much, you know, timekeeping for like doctors and nurses, uh, how much time are people spending, you know, in the exam room versus whatever. So there's all sorts of data. So the reason why I wanted to highlight this, and I, I wasn't planning on, but I just read an article in the economist week, which talked about some of the NHS data problems, and I thought it was such a great encapsulation of any large organization data issues. Um, and I just wanted to like frame the article. So the, uh, so I want to review it a little bit with you, and um, also for those of you that may not know this, but it's an organization that whose budget is 181 billion pounds. So if they can figure it out. Um, so anyway, so the article I'm going to read through it. I think it's great. Um, how to make bringing health service AI ready? The NHS should clean up and open up its data. Patients will benefit. So the National Health Service is generating all the vast lots of data on Britain's health, organized using NHS numbers to every person in its care. The system enables world leading studies, blah, 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 blah. You might suppose it's a tre treasure trove for artificial intelligence. Why, why may it be a treasure trove? Why, why could they do this if the data was better? Your patient is Exactly, you could improve health outcomes. But what are some of the issues that may stand in the way? Does anyone want to take a wild guess before I reveal the 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 punch? Privacy, privacy, privacy. Privacy. Anything else? Privacy. Privacy. Unstructured data. Unstructured data. Data that's very hard to parse. Yeah, great guesses. Let's see what the article says. Much of this sort of data data is a mess. Organized in a way in ways which serves doctors, treating patients, but not AI developers hoping to put it to computers. Without good systems to manage data, operating rooms often lie empty despite endless demands. 
When IP systems cannot talk to each other, the sick must drive themselves busy repeating their medical histories in every new interaction. So the lack of a proper data ecosystem is actually having real life implications here with people's lives. Um, and the other article was really enormous. Um, again, talking about the same thing, but like what they're trying to do about it, just, uh, I'm read there with the box, but, uh, such efficiency are not enable. Many when we reduce by stitching together disparate data sets across the NHS in, a, in an outcome project, the federated data plan. Uh, poor communication, uh, this is a different paragraph, uh, meant that until recently some NHS trusts on data chiefs were unsure of what the FTP was meant to do. As pressure had mounted on common services, which was confirmation has once again been deprioritized. Hospitals spend 234 million pounds on storing paper records. The procurement process has also raised the antenna of private grants, so they will get that. Um, they would always have to each at the front runner for the 480 million contract volunteer, which has combined data for CIA. So, what do we take away from all of this? What are some common things that affect me, my job, metadata, mention? IT systems that do not talk to each other. Uh, paper-based records, all over. A lack of hyper human data platform where I can go and say, like, hey, here's the data. Like, let me analyze it. Let me uh, access it in a in a way. But also from from a people perspective, like the lack of communication, right? The lack of a common understanding of what a data set means. Um, as you've all studied, like all about the metadata, like really understanding like what, what each column means, what are the possible uh, things that could be contained. Um, and the lack of an ethical framework to talk uh, about and, 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 and handling it. One, one example of that is privacy, but you can also think about things like algorithmic bias. Do you know what that is? Has anyone heard of that term before, algorithm device? I see some uh, nuts over here. Um, yeah, so algorithms, they just act on the data we train them on, so if the data has some sort of bias, then it's depicted on the prediction it makes. Right. So if we were, say, thinking about treatment data, but all of our clean data was on white patients, that the same may not apply for all the <coughs> So, all of this stuff, very common in all large organizations. I just thought that the NHS case study was an excellent encapsulation of uh, some of these uh, themes. Now, uh, this is also true for my role. So, as I said, I work with uh, the city of Syracuse and I've asked departments, like I've surveyed them, like, what are you doing? And, you know, as 5 and 58% of them, like, feel like they're not able to access the internal city records, like, let alone they records from uh, elsewhere, uh, fifty percent want to do more advanced analytics. They want to use their data better. They just don't necessarily have the research or the know-how or the data data to do so. So, you know, if you're looking for additional time, you have a treasure trove. I'm just saying, uh, and thirty percent like their internal expertise to use their data. So, what are we doing about? So, how do I think? About so, um, another analogy. Uh, about chicken. So, uh, so sorry, sorry, but uh, one of my mentors, uh, Joe Bonagur, who is the chief data officer of California, and she loves metaphors, and she always says, you need to have a good mentor. So her metaphor is, for data, you need to have roads, you, have, you need to have a key roads, you need to have uh, rules for the road, and then you need to have a, uh, you have to train your ideas. It's a perfect agreement. But then I want my own metaphor. So, okay, think about something that's like, Central New York team, so chicken wings. Uh, so if we want to make chicken wings, we need to ensure there's uh, sanitary protocols. Uh, we, we need a recipe, so take my grandma's, and we need a kitchen. So what does it mean in data terms? So now it means we need governance, we need rules for how we use our data. We need uh, the culture, the city's capacity for the and practice of the continued use of data in operations, and when we're talking about a kitchen tool, it refers to the infrastructure. So infrastructure, governance, and culture, if you want to summarize it somehow. So, um, after thinking about these three main components of it, 
uh, might be develop a data strategy which include milestones on, along those three uh, goals. Um, to, because the, the point I'm trying to make here is you gotta think about data just as building dashboards, right? You have to think about the data point, and you have to think about the ethics, and you need to think about the people that are going to be using this thing. So, through the strategy, we try to look at all of those things and develop milestones to build a better data foundation. So, uh, these things include things like, um, establishing a framework for internal data governance. So, we have a data governance. We can talk more about what that means if you're interested. Uh, another, uh, protecting individuals' privacy. So, maybe passing a privacy ordinance and then, uh, keeping the data that is at a sensitive level, like more look away or like things like that. Open data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, when we're talking about infrastructure, um, I'm sure a lot of you know what it means, but if I'm to simplify it, it means we have data from multiple systems within the city. So we, we uh, in, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm put here our example from permitting. We have a database that's called IPS. We have another database which is called Camino, and then we have a, lot, a whole bunch of flash files which contain important information for uh, We do a whole bunch of ingestion data transformation. And we write scripts so that happens every night. We could have it happening every second if we wanted to. That'd be more expensive. And then all of that gets funneled into our cloud data uh, or data warehouse. Uh, and then we use that to serve data to report uh, data tables or visualizations depending on what the department needs. Uh, another way of thinking about this is you have seen the bottom you have an integrated, organizing team data, which is a data platform, and solid data governance. So that's the infrastructure and the governance part. In the middle, uh, you see what that ultimately transform into, like the, the use of the data, which could be like seeing better insights, capturing insights through dashboard and analytics. It will be predicting things, uh, to machine learning, automating, more operational, Time saving or creating new products or applications. And um, we have examples of all, 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 all of this in the uh, single series, although given our maturity level, we mostly stick to insights at this point. Um, so I also wanted to talk about open data. Um, and anyway, remember that this is a uh, whole. Uh, Ecosystem, right? Um, because what we do in infrastructure has some implications for what we do. Well, the rules we set for how we govern our data set in parts of the system. Um, but anyways, so open data, okay, is anyone familiar with the concept of open data? Oh, it's just data that people can access for their own project or research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, does anyone want to venture why open data is important? Accountability. Accountability. About documentation of the historical data. Mm -hmm. Keeping a record of, of all, all everything that's going on in a particular issue. So that people can contribute their own Exactly. All three of those are brilliant. Uh, so we see you see if you maintain an open data program, which you can go now on data as well. Um, in it, you can search, uh, for particular topics. You will see, um, which ones have been added more recently. And you'll notice here, it says updated. I took the screenshot yesterday, 10, 26, 10, 23 at 4 a.m. Um, so this is, uh, this is what you serve the properties. Uh, this is our CSC land request, which is, what citizens use to, uh, uh, as the groupings for them, permits, uh, requests, they have code violations. Uh, all of these are data sets that you can go look, analyze. There's even, uh, APIs which you can use to, uh, pull the data into your own, you know, notebooks or whatever. Um, so just some numbers to throw your way. We have 104 open data sets. Um, 
the data which our pipelines build out of our data platform for daily updates because we feel um, that it's not enough to have data sets in the open. Like, what's most useful is to have accurate, up to date data sets. So that's where we have been doing that, the work of connecting our data infrastructure to open data so that the, if someone, for example, wants to do a visualization like, like suggested or, or, or add their own uh, creativity and listen to it, they have access to the, to the, to the uh, uh, latest things. So it is important to me also that these are data sets that are high quality data sets with metadata, right? Uh, that we have been reviewed and so on. That, that doesn't mean that they're basically perfect. Um, in fact, part of the value that I see here for our open data program is that the city gets an extra set of eyes on, on their business. So sometimes there have been uh, uh, researchers that have been doing something with, with uh, one of our data sets. And they're like, hey, like, uh, this is thing. I like, you're, you're having a know about you. Like, you stop reporting this. And they're like, yeah, well, we, 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 we didn't see that. They give the department that's needed the data this year. Um, so then, then that allows us to go back and like fix the problematic source. Uh, we also receive around 300, 900, um, 3900 page visits. Um, but our open data is not only about the website, right? It's also about the people that use it. So that's why as part of our open data milestones, we also make sure that we are in the community. Uh, talking with the users, uh, capturing their feedback. Uh, we try to do uh, well in, uh, um, in, in design, they use, uh, they call it a um, user-centered uh, approach, like user testing and all of that, uh, to make sure that we improve improving the uh, uh, accessibility of the of the portal, but um, also just, you know, going on events. So that's in uh, Hackathon in SU from last year. Um, that, and that's uh, Jason Sharp, or our, our data program manager, who runs this program. We're doing our open data day next week, the same. Um, and we also uh, feature uh, projects that have been done using our open data. We, we encourage people to do more things with open data, and we feature it. So uh, I, I know the first one uh, in the talk, uh, it's uh, lead uh, exposure risks uh, created by uh, Sibra, who's, uh, na uh, uh, I think she's a master's at this group, I don't remember exactly what school, uh, she's our intern for the fourth master. Um, someone created a chatbot, uh, using our, our statistic line data, which is what we're using, and it's a beautiful public art analysis that allows you to, like, see in a map what, what's the part of Like, now you can see, Filter like hey like bam 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 like what sort of salt is and, and this was part of a, 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 a new thing that we launched this year which is a data challenge which we're inviting uh, people from the community to uh, uh, do things with a particular data set that, that was German as a, as a way to you know continue that bigger uh, uh, cycle which, which I really believe that is of having more people getting value out of open data which then Great incentives for the city to clean and release more data, which then gets people more invested of, uh, by having more availability of data and so on and so on. Hopefully, you know, and, you know as, as, as I've been mentioning, have a lot of messy data in the uh, city government. So uh, putting it out there and, and being forced to be like, okay, we're well, running this open is sort of put the pressure on us to like look inwards and be like, Hey, like we really need to get our stuff together when it comes to the data set, uh, because it's going to be the open. And, and if we don't, then someone's going to fail. Um, so, anyways, um, I'm now going to turn to, uh, I guess, the, the fun part of the presentation, like the so what part of the presentation. What are some cool things that uh, we uh, have done with, with the data in, in my department? Um, there are many multiple ways that you can think about an analytical use case. It's just uh, one possible way to categorize. Uh, there are many different frameworks. This is, by the way, from um, uh, a playbook that I put together when I was in grad school, the analytical playbook for cities um, that I helped write uh, with uh, Anne and Ralph at the time was. 
uh, chief analytics officer of New York City. But based, uh, anyway, so it's, uh, uh, it just helps you to think a little bit about what you can do, uh, prioritizing, scenario analysis, normal detection, matching, estimating, targeting. Uh, another way to look at the same questions is from uh, 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 Chattanooga uh, uh, data science team. Uh, it's basically like trying to explain to different departments like how can you can use data, that's needed in a, in a haystack, for example, using restaurant inspection data to identify targets for audits, prioritizing backlog, if you have like too many things to do and you need to like start with the biggest return. Uh, for example, back in test control backlogs, by their severity, by looking at other people's complaints, early warning tools, for example, identifying police officers, by the excessive use of force, and properly intervening, optimizing resource allocations, finding where it would be most cost effective to place ambulance standby location, experimenting for what works, finding e e evidence, e for example, A testing, I don't know, SMS text or an email to improve conversion rates or um, uh, this is from the uh, Harvard Kennedy School uh, Arts Center uh, article that I have written on the case for government investment in rural leaders, basically saying, hey, like, this is going to take an investment in money and like research and stuff, but there's very clear return on investment that you can calculate by, you know, saving people time or Maybe finding frauds or improving uh, uh, collection. So um, I, I think that that's also very important when you're doing analytics. Like you're not doing it for the sake of doing it. You're doing it because it's a little right. Maybe it's not money, right? Like maybe it's not that the city has a higher budget in the end, but you should be at the very least aiming to deliver value for someone, whether it's a constituent or department. Um, so a couple of things that we worked on. In Syracuse, more specifically, this is pretty well tied to the issue of transparency. So this is just a simple dashboard um, based on our spending of the American Rescue Plan uh, uh, round. So after the pandemic, the Biden administration released a lot of money for municipalities uh, to, 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 to power their um, recovery. So we said, OK, let's give it some opportunity to also be more data driven and to be more transparent. So we uh, decided to uh, work on a dashboard that would uh, explain to uh, constituents like where was our money going, in what categories. And you can see here like economy, families, government, infrastructure, how many projects are complete, it's a very high level job, but how many projects are in place, how many projects are being planned. We also showcase how much money we spend. Uh, in each one of these categories in, in a separate tab. Um, and then you can also see more granularly what are all the projects and that are going on, what is the main output, and what is the actual output. So, for example, for the last one, and this is for, from a while ago, so this is when we're just getting started, so that's why a lot of projects don't have an output yet. But for some of these employment and federal program, you can see in the second tab how much money we spend. You can see what the the output flow is number of stipends and what the act, how many of the actually got from 500 way. Um, so very simple visualization. I'm sort of starting simple here. Uh, but, but honestly, the, the challenge here wasn't so much building a dashboard, but rather building a culture of collecting data and setting that because we, we really didn't have a unified, like, project management approach in city government. Part of this, we're like, okay, like you're gonna get money, like you should do that you're ready. But but now we're saying, hey, if you wanna use this money, like you're gonna have to think about what are you trying to get at. Like what is your output now? Ideally you would also be thinking about what your output is now. Right? Uh, this is another one of our uh, high visibility products, it's our uh, winter weather operations tool. So this is uh, a tool that we built in collaboration with ESRI. Um, so, whenever there's a snowstorm, what is this here? Not for snow. Um, all of our, cheap, all of our uh, snow plows are equipped with 
GPS sensors and other sort of sensors to identify where they're at. We take that data uh, in real time, and every time that there's a snowstorm, we can track where um, uh, this, the, this, uh, the snow dogs are. And, and the meaning was very simple. Uh, you, you could just see like the snow dogs going to the, the, the map, and this helped alleviate some of uh, citizens' concerns because, and this is all like public, right? Um, some citizens were like, Hey, like, the, the, the cloud hasn't gone to my street, so they can like, oh, and you can monitor it here. Over time, uh, we evolved and like, uh, we have a map where you can see like, oh, like, how long ago was this? Uh, and now, we are working towards a full like, winter weather operation tool, um, which tells you like, hey, like, how was our response in terms of time compared to the previous so, like we can track our performance over time and we can identify uh, why we're performing the work. We're also keeping track of illegally parked cars, by the way. Lots of illegally parked cars came with you. Well, you guys need to be able to it. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, a, a big one for us. Um, this is our uh, permit. Uh, uh, Dashboard is well, these are major dashboard where we track different APIs. In this case, for permits, this is all leveraging what I was mentioning before our Azure uh, data platform. Um, the way we use this is because there's permits in many multiple systems, we bring it all together, as I was saying earlier, and this just helps to facilitate what we call a performance management approach. I don't know if you or use, uh, use this term here, but basically. We sit down in a room with the mayor and we're like, hey, like, let's put our permits, let's put our permit targets. We say, hey, like, commercial renovation and remodeling, we, know we hit our goals 53% of the time. That's down from 62% last year. Um, and really, it's all about like, how you use the data. And in this case, we use the data to ask questions. Like, hey, why was our, our, uh, our performance then? Like, what changed? Are we having more uh, permits submitted this, this year, or is it a staffing issue? And we use it to identify hypotheses, like, hey, maybe this is a, for example, staffing issue, so we need to work on that. Like, we need to make sure that we, our hiring processes are so, um, We're not getting too much in the weeds here. I do think it's important to know that it shouldn't be used as a punitive tool. Right, it's not like we're gonna like the mayor's gonna like come and beat people overhead if they fail to miss one of the roads. Uh, but it's important to keep everyone accountable and keep everyone in the know. Like, hey, like how is everyone how is everyone performance going? Uh, final use case. Uh, this is not from Syracuse, but this is from um, when I was working with uh, support of Dakota. Uh, this is gonna be. Uh, about fire prevention. Um, fire prevention uh, in uh, the city of Sioux Falls. Um, so basically, the, the issue what here was uh, there's a lot of properties that are at risk of uh, fires, and we do a number of fire inspections this, each year, but we cannot possibly cover all the properties. So uh, we found a simple uh, predictive model. Uh, the basic basic model is um, on the uh, side over there. This first, we collect all the fire incident data. We then combine that with uh, all the data sets at the property level, right? So, okay, you, you know, have a parcel, then that parcel hasn't received a fire. That's the, the, the variable that we want to predict, right? Yes or no, when, but then we look at other things like square footage or, you know, have to receive a, a code violation and so on. So, first we have a lot of exploratory data analysis. So, as you can see here in this uh, uh, corner over here, it's a correlation matrix, like which uh, variables have a high correlation with, with, with other variables, and then uh, over there at the top, you can see the relative importance uh, 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 graph 
uh, for for what ended up being the most. Like what what helped us to predict the most uh, 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 accurate. Um, so in the end, this ended up looking like a tool such as this, which basically takes all the parcels in the city and uh, uh, categorizes them in, by the level of risks. And you can see uh, all of the different variables that are part of the uh, exercise. And uh, um, it, it also tells you, like, oh, the ones that are in red, like, those are probably the ones, the ones that you want to prioritize for the environment. So that's uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, a final call to action. Uh, so next week, we have our Open Data Day, uh, which is, I think, going to be a really nice continuation of this event over here. So we're going to have uh, sessions such as this one, but more technical, also using specific tools and whatnot. Uh, we also have a hackathon, which I encourage all of you to participate. We have uh, 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 cash prices, uh, thanks to our partnership with Center 60 So, top project, I think, is a top of ours. So, please apply. Actually, everyone that's free next Saturday, what do you think? Now, they have the funds. No. I can wait. Yeah, you're not coming. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, I should have put a QR code now that I think about it. But anyway, if you go to the Open Data Day, you'll find it. Uh, and also, I'm hiring. So if anyone uh, wants to uh, come work for a city, uh, we have a bunch of internships available. We also have multiple locations uh, that are uh, in, in the fields of data, uh, but also technology or project management. So we'll be more than happy to talk to anyone that may um, be interested. I'll take any questions. And I was wondering what action by you making to improve the availability of more data sets for data pipelines mm -hmm. uh, in the open data portal. Yeah. Um, let me let me start with the second question. Uh, uh, so what am I going to improve the availability of open data? Uh, pipeline. So the first thing we wanted to do in the city was to build a framework for determining what should be open data in the first place, right? So we, we asked all departments to inventorize their data and to take a look at it. Uh, we would it with them and we say, hey, maybe this is a good candidate for open data. Um, but there needs to be like a review process, right? Where we take a look at the data, we say, hey, because Obviously, and I forgot to mention this, but obviously, you don't want to put all of your data sets in, in an open data form, right? Because you have sensitive data, you have AI, you have things that may build liability for the city, or, or like even like many infrastructure data you don't want to put there, right? Because, you know, let's say you have a malicious site that are really wanting to, you know, cut up the city's water supply, just to like a very extreme example. And then you don't want to like put all of that up in the internet, right? So then you can be, so that the, the governance, what I call the governance point first there. And then we we'll go with the department to identify uh, what data sets are open. So uh, it should be open. Um, but it's a bit easy process. And we also open it up to the public uh, to, to tell us, like, hey, like, what data sets do you like to see? And that, that's a great excuse for us to go back to the department and be like, hey, like, people ask you for this, like, let's, let's uh, and what was your first question? Uh, what do you think we are planning on this uh, yeah, shortage of these data? Oh, um, well, in, in, in the case of Syracuse, we, we have my team, the API, and we sort of provide 
provide that expertise for the department, like the more advanced stuff. So the, the department just needs to know like what their operational goals are and we'll do for you to them. Um, however, obviously we cannot serve every single department. So one of the things we've been thinking about is and we haven't fully uh think this yet, but how do we build pipelines to improving basic data expertise throughout the entire city? So one of the things we have done is we've designated uh what we call a data steward or a data expert. So this is not need to be like someone that knows like advanced statistics or anything, just someone that understands what data their their partner is using for with. Uh, and then what we want hope hopefully for in the future is like maybe build a basic curriculum uh, or uh, because it's very hard for analysts and, and data scientists to do their work if, the, if, if they cannot speak the same language of the business uh, users, right? So there's some there's some merit to be discussed in uh, building data literacy as well. And it can be easy like very simple like Excel, right? It doesn't need to be anything more advanced than that at the start. What sort of skills or qualities should someone have to work for the team? Hmm. Um, well, it's a great question. I assume you mean this team or just like in the city in general? Related to the Yeah. Um, well, I always think that technical skills can be learned. But it's the soft skills, it's the people skills that are really, really relevant to do your work well here. Like, and, and I know that there's some, some stereotypes of like, oh, like if you're like a software developer or like a data geek, like you're just want to be behind a computer and like not talk to anyone. Whenever I hire someone, I'm going like dispense of that myth because I expect my data professional to be incredibly good at working with others and working with others are various levels of experts. So I want someone that can set us a translator between, you know, what's going on at a data, uh, at a data level, but also someone that can both speak with the uh, truck driver for sanitation and be, and, and like understand what their work is like, which may use a completely different language. Right? So, uh, another quality and this, you know, the, the, the previous presentation highlights very well, like, that sort of like each other with mindset of like, okay, we're going to start with one idea of what we want to get at, but it's going to change over time. So you need to be adaptable to, uh, to, to do that effectively, right? Um, yeah. I tried to build like open data service. It's a very good website. Thank you. I'm wondering if you know about uh, if the open database, this project is on, on the green by Syracuse or the uh, SME. It's a statewide, uh, most of the in the Europe state or it's nationwide. Um, so the website that I showed, that's for the city. Uh, we do try to work with organizations that may have relevant data at a city level and include those data sets as well. So for example, central backgrounds. Um, there's a big movement of open data portals. Uh, I don't know if New York State has an open data portal. I think they do. They do, yeah, good. Um, but yeah, not, not every city has uh, an open data portal, but I think I personally think. So for the data science major, what skill we need to master or what course we need to learn? For the uh, data science major? Yeah. Um, that's a tricky question for me because I personally feel like we are stuck at, at such a, I, I didn't talk about this so much in detail, but we're, we're at such a deficit when it comes to having quality data sets in the city that I feel like if I hire a data scientist, I really wouldn't, like, like you need a lot of data for a data scientist, like paper itself. Like, like Python and R. Yeah. Um, so what, what I'm saying is, I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't care if it's Python or R. I'm, I'm good with either. But if you want to come to data science at the local level, you need to understand that you don't have a lot of good inputs of data 
So even if you're a data scientist, perhaps you're going to need to think like a data engineer a little bit. And perhaps you're going to need to think like a, um, I don't know, white professional of data quality. I don't know, somebody for data quality. So I would say that answer is the same in a lot of companies too. So I don't think that's specific. In the city of Syracuse or cities, you don't have data, you can't do data science. Yep. And some large companies have teams focusing on data and some on data science. Many companies, when you get there, you got to get the data and then do some data science. Yeah, what are the most prominent issues that you and your office are facing right now? Which can be caught by data or basic technology? Well, um, we are working, like, so the, the biggest issue that we're trying to solve for in my department right now uh, is uh, data, uh, uh, problems related to sanitation. So like trash in that's been a big priority for the major. And this is sort of like a, 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 um, a tangent, but I, I, I would always recommend to a department that's starting out in this world to always start what you're doing to like something that this community really, really cares about because this is going to take time and it's going to take issues. So um, sanitation for us is something that the major really cares about. And it's something that we have been really working on um, to capture data and to display that data in ways that are meaningful. And um, uh, that, that has to do with the sanitation trash card, uh, so, sorry, the sanitation uh, 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 vehicles that collect the trash cards. Yes, and, and we are uh, also putting GPS and, 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 and device and, and uh, clean management software in those that, that gives the good data. Yeah. But also, like, where are uh, 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 illegal trash setups happening throughout the city? So, where are we seeing like breaches of our sanitation code? Um, so, I think that there is an interesting point to be made about the intersection of technology and data because if you don't have the appropriate system to collect data, then it's really hard to like make it. So right now we are uh, going to a new system for siting uh, 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 trash setups where the, the code inspector before we write in a paper and then that paper we take it back to his um, uh, test at the end of the day and then we send it to finance so that they can build it to the right address and it's all paper based and it's it really hard to keep track of. So instead of that we are a moving to a system where each inspector has their cell phone where they're taking pictures, but it also comes with a printer. And if there's an app where they can go and like, hey, like, I'm going to cite this property for this, this. They, they, they put the, 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 the trash bags without the cards, whatever. Um, uh, and A, that makes it more efficient for the code inspector that now doesn't have to like deal with all the paper, but the side benefit is that it also generates a lot more reliable data where we can immediately look at oh, where we site. Um, so, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Last question. Can you um, talk a little about the structure of your department? Like, are most of the people that work there with a data science background, or were they like folks that were doing different city roles and were getting trained in it? Like, how was the, the breakdown of the, of the folks that are in your Sure. Area? And how is it has evolved over time? Um, but uh, right now we have a director of analytics and data management, which is which is a position we just hired this year uh, to handle our entire data portfolio. Um, we have data engineers. Uh, we have data analysts. So not like data scientists, but like people that are really good at building, are collecting requirements and building Power BI visualizations. Which is what we use in, in, in our case. Um, then we also have data project managers um, to take those big complex problems and make sure that the project, uh, the communication with the client, the, the development of the project is all going uh, smoothly. We don't have a data scientist on staff um, because I think that's complex. Even yeah. like get all your labor for quick. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.